But last year we uh, started making our own tweeters, uh, first for the SCM7 and the SCM11, mm -hmm. and then um, shortly after that for the SCM19 and SCM40. So we are, they, are, are they different? No, they're the same The same drive unit used in all of that Hi-Fi passive series. So why did you say you first... In the they, they were launched... Ah, uh, in different... Uh, yeah, they were launched earlier. So the 7 and the 11 were the first products that featured our, our new tweeter. Um, so for a long time we wanted to be self-sufficient on the drive units we, we uh, produced, to be in charge of the technology, the performance. Uh, we've always tried to, I suppose, one of our goals has always been to start the system design, if you like, with the drive units. So identify the performance you want to reach and then engineer drive units um, to help make the system engineering simple. So it was a logical progression following on from making the base drivers and the tweeters uh, to then move forward and, and produce our own tweeter. We're actually producing two versions of the tweeter, a standard and a super, just like the mid-range dome. So we have a standard version with a smaller magnet system mm -hmm. where we're using for the SCM7, SCM11, SCM19 and SCM40. And then a, a more powerful version, the S version, that will be used in the uh, larger products. The tweeter is quite unique in that it uses a dual suspension design just like the mid-range dome. Mm -hmm. So we have a suspension fitted towards the top. Actually, if we look at this part here, we have the lower suspension fitted. You can just see down the bottom there. And this part is awaiting the fitment of its upper suspension. Mm -hmm. So the reason we drove uh, towards this design was uh, we wanted to run a very narrow magnetic gap to give us better heat sinking away from the coil, higher flux density and higher efficiency. And we wanted to run the part without the need for ferro fluid. Uh, many of our previous tweeters we've used from other manufacturers, such as Aviva and Cias, have used ferrofluid. One for higher power handling and two to help damp their low frequency resonance. Mm -hmm. and the problem with the ferrofluid is it suffers from drying out over time and this affects the frequency response. So we wanted to build engineer a tweeter that didn't use ferrofluid, which had more consistent performance over time. So the dual suspension helps to more accurately control the voice coil motion. So we can run the tighter magnetic gap and also helps to control rocking modes. Rocking modes within the uh, diaphragm structure uh, produce inharmonic distortions, which are quite nasty and unpleasant to listen to. So by employing two suspensions, an upper and a lower separated, about four millimeters, this helps to maintain the pistonic movement of the voice coil and the diaphragm and suppress the rocking modes. It's, it's, I think it's quite unusual for a tweeter design. Yeah, it's been, it's been it difficult because using the dual suspensions mean we need to use a longer voice coil former. Um, and because it's longer, it means the first bending mode of the voice coil former is pushed down in frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, so that had to be over the, the bending mode problems had to be overcome. And you've also added some more mass by using a longer voice coil former. Mm -hmm. So we've had to use larger magnet. So how did you overcome these problems? Uh, with bracing mm -hmm. uh, and, and with a larger motor system. Mm -hmm. So the super version of this tweeter is uh, the flux density and the gap is 2 tesla, 20,000 gauss. And in the standard one? It's about one? It's about 16, 15 and a half, 16 in the standard version. Mm -hmm. uh, we can accept lower flux density because of the partnering components it's with. Uh, we don't need as high efficiency tweeters to partner with the 7, the 11, the 19 yeah. and the 40. Mm -hmm. Um, but if we were buying, but we, because this is only for our own use, it's easy for us to make this decision. A commercial drive unit manufacturer would never produce a lower sensitivity tweeter because people, they need to produce a part that is acceptable to a wide range of people and, and high efficiency is usually on the criteria for that mm -hmm. part. But in this situation, we could look at the system specification uh, and, and make the decision for a slightly lower efficiency based on the partnering components. We had to assemble this room for the tweeter assembly um, to help control the temperature. Um, the super glues, the cyanoacrylate glues that we use for the assembly, their viscosity, their thickness varies with temperature. 
So achieving well controlled temperature uh, means that we can dose the glue more carefully. Uh, because as you go up in frequency, from the mid-range to the high frequency part, the um, tolerance on the mass of the moving components becomes much, much smaller. You can have two identical looking parts, visually, that look perfect, but one would be a pass and one would be a fail. Be it for frequency response or, or sensitivity or one other drive unit parameter. These are all jigged for awaiting uh, suspension and, and mounting ring. So a lot of the, the design and the way the part is assembled is taken from the mid-range dome. A lot of design ideas taken from that. And this outer diameter are very con closely controlled in manufacturing to achieve very accurate fit between the two parts. And again, this, this helps. Uh, this, is, this is a necessity of running a small voice coil gap. This is the S version, the larger magnet, mm -hmm. about 30% larger piece of neodymium uh, mm -hmm. used in this to achieve two, two Tesla or 20,000 Gauss. This is a standard motor compared with the super motor. Same diameter, but the uh, thickness is greater on the S version and also the inside diameter is smaller on the S version.